Good evening to you, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. This is Pastor Jay, of course. I speak and decree the blessing of the Lord on your life. I pray that all is going well with you. I pray that you are receiving the desires of your heart. And if you're not receiving what you're desiring, I hope you're praying and staying in faith so that those things that you are confessing will become a reality in your life. Praise God. Well, I've got a great word for you this evening. I believe it's going to bless you. I believe it's going to challenge you. I believe it's also going to empower you to do your part so that we can usher in the move that God wants to usher in in this world and in your immediate surroundings. So without any further ado, let's get into the word. And before we get into the word, let's talk to God about our study and time in the word tonight. Father God, we just thank you again for the pleasure of your word and for the opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace. I pray that our hearts are open and receptive to hear what thus saith the Lord. I pray that everybody who comes into contact with this word will receive at least one revelatory truth from you that when applied to their lives and their situations will bring about a divine change. Lord, I thank you in advance for what you will release in this word, in this teaching. And I thank you for the consistency of your people who continue to tune in, who continue to hear your voice, and who continue to be fed. Father God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for what you're doing and for what you desire to do. And we align ourselves with your will so that you can accomplish everything you've ordained for our lives, both corporately as a church body and individually. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's get right into the word. You know, I did not share a new lesson with you last week because the Spirit of God actually prompted me to uh, review or repost the lesson that we talked about on that prior Sunday. And it was just that important where we were talking about the hearing of faith. And so I thought it was very important to repost that so you can get that in your spirit. That's a message you actually should add to your regular, uh, regularly scheduled programming where you go back to that from time to time and build yourself up on your most holy faith in that area, because that's a major key to walking with God and receiving from him what he has for you. Well, today, this evening, I've got a message for you, maybe one or two lessons. I know I've got more than what I have here to share with you tonight, and so we'll probably be on this for a couple of weeks unless the Spirit of God points me in another direction. And I think it's very important that you listen intently because this is something that the Spirit of God laid on my heart, and I believe it's necessary for us to uh, go to the next level in God. And you hear that word thrown around all the time, next level, but I really believe that because the scriptures tell us that we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. So for us to hit that next level of faith and for us to experience that next level of glory, it's on us. Praise God. That's the message title. It's on us. And as children of God, I want you to know that we don't have to accept and tolerate the way of the world around us. Okay. Although it's, it's around us, we see it. It impacts us. We don't have to accept it and we don't have to tolerate it. And it seems though every, it seems as though every time you turn on the news, every time you open your social media post or whatever, there's more bad news. Something has happened to someone, something, someone, you know, someone you don't know, maybe a celebrity, maybe a sports figure. doesn't matter. There are all kinds of things happening around us. But it's important to know that as children of God, we don't have to accept the outcome of the world. As a matter of fact, as children of God, we can change things just like the followers of Christ in the book of Acts. We can turn the world around us upside down. That's what it says in Acts chapter 17, verse six. They were saying these are the men that turn the world upside down. Well, what did they mean by that? Was, those were worldly men declaring that these disciples, these apostles were turning the world upside down. They were saying they are disrupting the way we want things to be done. And I believe that God wants us to add some righteous disruption to 
the way things are going. Praise God. So it's on us. It's on us to turn the world around us upside down. We need to represent and flip the script. Represent and flip the script. But so this is when I say it's on us, this is really about one major thing that we need to embrace. There are a lot of things that we need to do. I believe this is at the core of it. So things will not change for the better unless we pray for change. I'll say that again. Things will not change for the better unless we and until we pray for change. And that's so important because the world is waiting on us. Romans 8, 19 talks about the manifestation of the sons of God in the new century version. That text says everything God made is waiting with excitement for God to show his children's glory completely. It's on us. The world around us is waiting. So we got to step it up. We got to step it up. We've been we've been complacent for far too long and it's going to begin through prayer. This is how we get started. We have to begin with prayer. And since the pandemic has hit, I know I've seen this scripture floating around more times than I'd like to. However, I believe for what God has given me to share with you this evening is appropriate. And so I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians, or I apologize, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, Verse 14, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I'm sure over the course of a year, if over the course of this pandemic time, you've heard this more than once. If you haven't heard it, I don't know what you've been listening to. But this scripture has come, come up in one way, one shape, one form from different men and women of God. Some some that profess to be men and women of God, some that I'm not so sure about. But that's not my that's not why I'm here tonight. However, for what God has given me, I believe that it's necessary and it's timely. So listen to what 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says. I'm reading the King James Version. It says, if my people. So who is he talking to? He's not talking to the world. He said, if my people. So God is directing this to us. Now, this is an Old Testament scripture. So that's good, Lord. I'll take, some, I'll take out a little time to do that. This is an Old Testament scripture. This is an Old Covenant scripture. So we have to be careful or we have to make sure that we don't apply our Old Covenant scripture to our New Testament or New Covenant reality. Now, we're going to draw some principles from this, and I believe that this text is prophetic in nature. However, I believe far too often people will snatch a scripture out of the Old Testament <clears throat> and try to make it relevant for where we are right now. But we're in a new covenant. We've got a better covenant established upon better promises. So we can't always just root something or take something out of the Old Testament and apply it to us right now today. Although it might sound good if it does not apply to our new covenant reality. We can't afford to be that reckless with the scriptures. We have to rightly divide the word of truth. However, for what the spirit of God is instructing us, it applies and it's appropriate because of the principles behind it. Listen to what it says. God says, if my people, so he's talking to us, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. There's a lot packed into that scripture. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, so this doesn't apply to the whole world. This is us. This is the church. This is, this is the body of Christ. We have to do this. He says, we need to humble ourselves. Stop thinking we know everything and stop thinking we got all the answers. We need to humble ourselves and pray. And seek his face, seek his guidance, seek his direction, seek his instruction. And that he also says, and turn from their wicked ways, because we have some ways sometimes that aren't in God's best interest that don't please him. So he says, you got to turn from those. That That's what repentance is, is turning from one way of doing to a new way of doing. Repentance isn't regret. Oh, my goodness. 
Many times people regret what they've done, but they don't repent from what they've done. For instance, a person can be unfaithful in a marriage and get caught. They regret being caught. They regret that they have been exposed, but they did not repent from the action because they continue with the illicit affair. So regret and repentance is not the same thing. You might regret uh, the choices that you made. You might regret the consequences of those choices. But if you're still making the same choices, you never repented because repentance means I turn from the way I was viewing the situation to a new way of viewing. I turn from the way I was doing things to a new way of doing. And so that's when he says, turn from your wicked ways. He said, repent from the way you're doing things. He says, when you do this, then I hear from heaven because we'll be restored back to fellowship. He says, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. He'll heal our land. He'll heal what concerns us. He will heal our affairs. He will heal what applies to the body of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now we see something right here that I wanted to touch on concerning this message. And it's this, he says, and will forgive their sin. Now, in light of what God has given me to share with you, I believe the sin in our case is twofold. It's apathy and neglect. The sin in our case, his people, is apathy. and Because remember now, we want to turn this world upside down. There's too much death. There's too much killing. There's too much, there's too much of everything happening around us. And it shouldn't be that way. And it's one thing to just throw up your hands and say, well, this is just the way of the world. And to a certain degree it is. But we can change the world around us. And check this out. If every believer begins to change the world around them, ultimately the world will change. Because if I'm changing my city, if I'm changing my block, if I'm changing my street and every other believer is attempting to do the same thing before long, our whole air, our whole atmosphere and the arena with which we operate within is changing because we each took the mandate to do what God is calling us to do. And you can do that right now. You can do that on your own. You don't have to wait for church. You don't have to wait for the pastor. You can begin to act according to the word today. Just get in God's word, see what he said and do what he said. That's all we got to hear and obey. Get in God's word, see what he said, and then do what he said. That's how you change your immediate area of influence. Praise God. So the sin in our case is apathy and neglect. Now, apathy is simply a lack of interest or concern. Uh, you could call it indifference to where we hear about things happening to people around us. And, you know, as long as I'm not affected, I don't care. I'm indifferent to it. You know, they lost their house. I don't care. I'm I'm, I'm secure. They lost their car. I don't care. I'm good. There's there, there, a family member. They lost a family member. Doesn't affect me. My family's straight. A lack of interest, a lack of concern. Uh, laws are changing that don't really line up with Christian values. I don't care. I'm still getting what I need. And so we have to stop being so apathetic towards the things that are happening around us. Now, everybody's not going to be an activist, okay? I'm not telling everybody to become an activist and start trying to go and change everything, but you can change your house. You can start dealing with your children differently. You can start dealing with your relatives differently and then you can start responding to your co-workers differently change the world that's around you don't be indifferent don't display a lack of concern listen to people listen to become aware of what people are going through and then listen to them through the lens of love and ask the holy spirit to show you what you need to say and do to be a change agent in that person's life if that's what god wants for you because god doesn't call you to everybody so I'm not telling you to go and get in everybody's business. However, we do need to be concerned about the world around us. So the first part of our sin is apathy. And the second part of our sin is neglect. Now, neglect is just a failure to care for properly or to disregard. That means we own, we own something. We own responsibility for a thing, but we simply neglect it. We disregard it. We don't, we, we take it for granted. And I believe as as a whole, the body of Christ has taken for granted our position in the world. And we've kind of just taken our hands off the wheel. And, you know, as long as we're all right, we'll go along for the ride. 
And I understand that to a certain degree, but we are in a time now to where if we want to see change, we've got to be the change. And change starts uh, at home. Change starts with you. You begin changing you first and then you change those around you and then those around you have a mandate to change those they come into contact with. And before you know it, everybody in your circle is an influencer and you're influencing those that you come into contact with. So we have to repent of the sin of apathy and the sin of neglect. We can no longer afford to just take our hands off the wheel and let this world go in whatever direction it wants to go in. Now, if we pray for and support each other, the world will be drawn to us. If we pray for and support each other, the world will be drawn to us. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. See, saints need to be praying for saints. You know, we, we it doesn't take a lot to set out a little time, set aside a little bit of time every day to just pray for the body of Christ, to pray for saints all around the world, to just say, well, Lord, you know, I, I was thinking of this the other day, a couple of days ago, and I believe it's appropriate for where we are right now. The best way to take your mind off your issues is to pray for other people's issue. <laughs> the best way to take your mind off your issues and those things that you don't feel like are flowing right in your life is to pray for the issues of other people. And the scriptures bear that out. It says we should be praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. What does that mean? We are supposed to support each other in prayer. All saints should be praying for all saints because what happens when you pray for the saints, inevitably God's going to lay somebody on your heart that he wants you to reach out to. He's going to lay someone on your heart that he wants you to pray for. He's going to bring somebody in your path that he wants you to speak a word to or do something for that's going to alleviate the pain they're going through because God can't do anything in and on the earth without human intervention and human involvement. So as we pray for all saints, God will begin to speak to us to lead and direct us by his Holy Spirit to those that are alert, those that are lost, those that are hurting, those that feel like they've been alienated. God to deal with you. He'll give you a right now word to speak to that person. You sometimes won't even know what you're saying. Sometimes you won't even believe or you won't understand that the words that God chose to speak through your mouth is exactly what that person needed to hear to make it through that day because you don't know where people are. A smile on the face does not mean everything is okay. A fancy car does not mean everything is okay. A nice wardrobe does not mean everything is okay. There are plenty of people that are struggling and it has nothing to do with their financial situation. They're struggling physically. They're struggling emotionally. They are struggling relationally and they're struggling in their, in their, in their spirits because they don't have a working relationship with God. They don't have a connection to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so it looks like if you measure it by the world standard, everything is cool. But God will pull back the curtain and he'll give you a right now word for that person that address right where they are. And I'm talking about believers because all believers aren't doing well. That's one of the things the Spirit of God has been dealing with me about. Uh, the, the body of Christ is not doing well, not as well as it should be doing. And we're going to do something about that personally we're going to be back in in-person worship uh soon very soon out uh, there there's announcements to come within the next couple of weeks so i want you to stay focused stay tuned on our youtube page and we're going to give you a, an announcement within the next week or so about when we will resume in-person worship so let's keep going prayer itself this is good prayer itself now we are being called to pray and if praying was easy everybody would do it but prayer itself is a work of faith and a labor of love and this is actually a revelation that the spirit of god gave me as i was reading he it, it's like he flipped the meaning of the scripture because though that's actually in the text i want to read to you and that's in first thessalonians chapter one verses two and three it says we give thanks to god always for you or we give thanks to god always for you all making mention of you in our prayers and if you know anything about paul when you read his letters you know he pray he was a prayer he prayed for the church he prayed for the church uh 
two powerful prayers are in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one and Ephesians chapter three. Those are prayers that you should pray for yourself and your loved ones almost every day if you could. And so Paul was a prayer and Paul was one of the most effective apostles that ever walked the earth. So if he was a prayer, I think we're in good company if we're prayers. But prayer is a work of faith and it's a labor of love. Let's look at the scripture. Verse two again, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Now, what the Spirit of God revealed to me through that text is that prayer itself. He said we are giving, he said we're remembering without ceasing your work of faith, talking to the Thessalonians, he said, we remember without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love. And then the spirit of God impressed upon me that prayer itself is a work of faith and prayer itself is a labor of love. Why? Because you don't always feel like praying. <laughs> Although we should, the scriptures are, are plain about that. First Thessalonians 5, 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. We should pray every day. However, it's a work of faith and it's a labor of love because we don't always want to, nor do we feel like praying for ourselves, let alone for other people, let alone for the body of Christ, let alone for saints. So at times it will be a work of faith. And at times it will be a labor of love, but it's necessary. It's necessary. So don't let your feelings get in the way. Well, I don't feel like praying. I got my own issues. Why should I be praying for other people's issues? Because it's part of our responsibility. We are supposed to pray with out ceasing we are supposed to be making all supplication for the saints that just means a uh, definite request that just well that's petitions but supplications just mean targeted prayers we are supposed to be praying for the saints according to the word of god and and in and of itself it's a work of faith and a labor of love sometimes i have to get up earlier than, than i would like to to pray the way god wants me to pray that's a that's a labor of love because i would much prefer to rest in the bed for another hour but i'm prompted by the spirit of god to get up at a certain time to pray for a certain group or to pray for a certain issue or to pray for a certain event and so it's a work of faith and it's a labor of love it's a work of faith because i don't know what's happening outside of my prayer but i know that prayer works and i know that god has mandated that we pray so it will be a work of faith and it will be a labor of love but it has uh far-reaching uh, dividends. It's, it's bigger than just natural payoff. It has a spiritual payoff. It has a spiritual component that blesses you. And it also has a natural component that blesses you because when you obey God's word, he's always going to bless you for your obedience. So uh, we can pray in two ways. Now we're talking about this because God is telling us that we need to humble ourselves and pray. We need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our relatives. We need to pray for our communities. We need to pray for our churches. We need to pray for our pastors. Pastors. If, if I'm your pastor, you need to pray for me because our leaders need to be built up in Christ. Our leaders need to be strengthened in Christ because there's a lot of things happening in the world. In the world, there is a lot of satanic activity that's trying to destroy God's kingdom. And so apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, those are the gifts that God gave the body of Christ for edification and equipping. And so you need to pray for your pastors. You need to pray for those people that have a, a, a spiritual authority in your life because they need to be covered. And it's your responsibility to do that as children of God. They're praying for you. I'm praying for you. So you should also Pray for me and pray for us. And, and we can pray in two ways because I wanted to give you a practical way to do this. Again, we're coming from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, seek my guide and seek my instructions, find out how I want it done and turn from their wicked ways, turn from their crooked ways, turn from their faulty ways, then I hear from heaven. I forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So we can pray in two ways. And I'll turn to 1 Corinthians 14 for that. And we'll get ready to bring this to a close. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 and 15 says, ah, we can pray in two ways. All right, check it out. Paul says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. So we can pray in two ways. We can pray with the spirit and we can pray 
with the understanding. Now, I taught a lesson a while back pre-pandemic on the gifts of the spirit and on, and on praying in tongues. And I'll probably cover that when we get back to in-person worship, because I believe that's a key to our power. I pray in the spirit at all times. So one of the two ways we can pray without ceasing is to pray in the spirit or pray with the spirit. And to pray with the spirit is praying in tongues according to the spirit of God within us. When we pray in the spirit, we're not making something up. When we pray in the spirit, the spirit within us is giving us divine utterance. So we're praying according to the will of God because Holy Spirit is praying through our spirits and it bypasses our mind. That's what praying with the understanding is. Praying with the understanding is when we pray with our minds based on known information. For instance, I'll have a, a cousin might call me and say, hey, I'm not feeling well. Pray for me to be healed in Jesus' name. So I can pray with my understanding by saying, Lord, I pray that my cousin so-and-so be healed of their issue right now in Jesus' name. I pray based on what I knew, and then I can declare scriptures to cover them. But many times, more often than not, even when someone asks you to pray for them about what they're dealing with, often there are underlying issues anyway. So I prefer to pray with the spirit. I pray in tongues according to the spirit of God within me because the Holy Spirit prays according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit will always pray perfectly. He's not going to hit and miss because the Holy Spirit is only going to pray according to the will of God, which is the word of God. God. So we now there's nothing wrong with praying in your understanding. I pray with my understanding also. That's one way of prayer. Paul said, I pray in the spirit and I pray with my understanding also. Praying with your understanding is just praying based on the information you have. Somebody might say, well, hey, pray for me to do well on my test tomorrow. Well, then you can say, Lord, I pray that so-and-so does well on their test. I set myself in agreement with them in Jesus name. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I like to add to it and I say, Lord, I'm going to pray in the spirit for just a few seconds to 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 ensure that what needs to take place takes place. And then I pray in the spirit on that person's behalf for what they requested. And then I can give the Holy Spirit a little direction. I say, Holy Spirit, I'm just going to yield to you right now and I'm going to pray in the spirit for 30 seconds concerning so-and-so doing well on their test tomorrow. And then I pray in the spirit for those 30 seconds and I walk away done. It's covered in Jesus name. Sometimes I have to pray longer because I don't get a release. Sometimes it won't even be 30 seconds. Sometimes I might pray for 10 seconds. I don't even count it. I just know that, okay, I've done what I need to do and I'm released from doing. There are other times, not telling you to do this, but there are other, other times when I have to pray for certain issues for an hour or more consistently, not just one time, maybe the next day and the next day. You just pray until you get a release not to. So we pray with the spirit and we pray with our understanding. Now, neither way is wrong. Praying with the spirit is just more effective because it's more comprehensive. What do you mean is more comprehensive, Pastor Jay? Well, 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14, verse 2 says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. See, the beautiful part about praying in the spirit is that you're praying for things you don't even know about. You're praying for things that person that you're praying for might not even know about. It says when you pray in the spirit, you speak mysteries. Glory to God. So I always love to pray in the spirit. Because I can pray for what I know, but I can bypass my mind and I can also pray about things. Check this out. I can pray about things. I can pray about people and I can pray about situations I have no natural knowledge of. But Holy Spirit does and Holy Spirit lives within us. And so when we yield to Holy Spirit in prayer, he prays through us to accomplish God's will in our lives. Amen. Praise God. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I believe that if we embrace this and I want you to meditate on 2 Chronicles 7, 14, our people, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. He said, I'll forgive your apathy. I'll forgive your neglect and I'll heal your land. I will heal your sphere of influence. Amen. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I pray that it's blessed you. I look forward to bringing the word to you next week. And remember this, you are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. I love you all. Be blessed.
in Jesus' name.